Hello and welcome back to another Computer Sluggish tutorial. In today's video we're going to be testing out my top 6 most favourite Android emulators. We're going to be testing out this awesome racing game and see which emulator plays it the best. Also we're going to be checking out all the features that each emulator offers. To start off with, in the last place we have Droid 4X. If we go straight over to the settings, this Android emulator is currently only in beta. It did do good though, but overall, personally, I think it failed, obviously, against all the other five emulators. This is your basic settings that you have. If we go across to our other settings, you can change your CPU to 8, which is great. You can't actually do that in like Bluestacks 3 and a couple of other emulators. So it did all right on that. We can also install another APK from our desktop instead of having to do it from the PlayStation Store. Let's go ahead now and test out this racing game. For the racing game, it did not detect the keys, but it didn't do that in any of the emulators. But the best thing about this one, which a lot of them do offer, it has key simulation, which you can simply click on the key simulation and select what you want each button to do. As you can see, I'm selecting what I want the arrows to do and the accelerator and the brake. Now, if I go save, we can now use W, which accelerates, and we can use S, D, and A to move around on the vehicle and brake. As you can see, I'm currently getting a solid 60 frames per second, which is absolutely fantastic for a Android game. That is exactly what we want. Let's move on now and check out the next Android emulator. And next up we have Andy Emulator. I personally cannot stand this emulator. I have always found the install is slow. I've had a lot of bugs and problems with the actual emulator itself. And where are the settings for the emulator? It is not clear enough how to adjust the settings for the emulator. I know a lot of you do love this emulator and you're probably going to comment below and say, how can Andy score so low? when it's such a great emulator but obviously this is what i think and i don't like it but anyway let's test out this game and see how well it runs but already i could not set the key mapping on it because i just could not figure it out it's not clear enough right we are now in game and i will show you exactly what i mean about the key mapper in andy if you select on it you think oh great manual you can easily select manual and select what you want each thing to do on the game but no it's not that simple it then pops up with all this rubbish as well i just want to play the game i simply just want to click on what i want each thing to do on the screen and set it to the key on my keyboard but no it's not that simple I'm just going to drive my car now and we can't turn. I'm just going to show you how good it actually runs in a straight line. And yes, we are getting a nice solid 60 frames per second, which is obviously fantastic. That's what we want in a game when running a Android emulator. Let's move on now and try out the next emulator. Next up, we have CoPlayer. I personally like the look of this player. It looks great. The only thing I'm going to say is it does take a little while to load the actual emulator itself. A really long splash screen with a really long loading bar. But anyway, don't be put off by that. Let's go ahead and check out some of the settings it has to offer. Obviously on the left hand side here, as you can see, we got a key mapper. We got a vibrate button. We got a webcam button, a location button. We can also add a APK from our desktop if we want. Let's go ahead and check out the settings for the program now. Here, as you can see, we can change the resolution if we want. We can also do a custom resolution. If we go across to advanced, we can type in our own CPU core, which is great. We could change that to 8 if we want. We can also change our compatibility to OpenGL, or if we want speed, we can go for direct. X. It did pop up with a nice little window when you first installed this program asking you what you're after when um, 
obviously setting up the program. Let's just select the default setting for now, as we don't want to cheat because all the other Android emulators are on the default settings. I have not adjusted anything. And we got just a little bit more information there and that's it. Let's go ahead and try out our racing game and see how well it performs. Right, we are now in our racing game. Unfortunately, Fraps Overlay is not working in this emulator, which is obviously a shame. But I can tell you, it really did feel smooth when I played it earlier. And what I love about this is it's actually remembered my key map settings. I've not had to play around or adjust anything. Straight away, look, it's working. That's great. And yes, that is smooth. It really does sm um, feel smooth. No issues there, it it will be running a solid um, 60 frames per second, like the last Android emulators. Right, now let's check out our next emulator. This emulator I think looks really cool. It's the Nox emulator. Straight away, as you can see, it really is impressive. Everything's really nice and tidy, all the icons down the side, it's quite a smaller resolution look going on there. It also has themes, you can change the theme, how you want the actual Android emulator to look, which is obviously great. It gives you that extra bit of customization, which we all love. If we go up to our settings, we've got lots of options here. We can go to advanced. We can change our CPU performance again, our memory. We can also go custom. We can change our resolution. We can change up our startup settings to mobile phone. There is so much in there. We can change to DirectX, obviously to OpenGL. We can change the frame settings here as well. At the minute, it's on 60. If we go across to property settings, we got a few more options there. We got our interface settings and we got shortcut settings, which is great. We want to see as many settings and options as we can in a emulator. Let's go ahead and test out our racing game, see how well it performs on this emulator. I must admit that is very impressive. This game did not take nowhere near as long to load as all the other emulators so far. And straight away in the top right corner, as you can see, it's also remembered my key mapping settings, which is a great thing. I love that. It doesn't mean I have to keep messing around. Let's go ahead and drive around a little bit. At the minute, as you can see, we are getting a solid 60 frames per second. It's not even twitching at all which the other emulators were sometimes dodging down to the 58 frames per second. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead now and check out our next emulator. We now have Bluestacks in second place. I really do like this emulator. It is one of my favourites. I also like all the features it offers. For example, it has its own little Pika world, which means you can see other players that are using Bluestacks around your area. For example, you can see on my screen now, there's loads of different people around. If we go across to our account you can also earn little coins for doing different quests each day on blue stacks which is great it gives it that extra bit of um, motivation to want to use blue stacks also like the last emulator you can actually change the skin as well of blue stacks and there are lots of options and settings to adjust for example, here we can adjust our resolution of the application, we can change the DPI, we can also go down to engine and change the graphics mode, we can change our memory and our CPU cores. You have boss key, notifications, preferences, backup, restore and obviously check for updates of the program. Now let's go ahead and check out how well our racing game does in Bluestacks. Right, we are now in game and straight away it remembered our key map settings, which is great. But unfortunately, Fraps is not working. But I can tell you now it is smooth. We we definitely are probably getting 60 frames per second. I'm not feeling any glitch or lag here. Blue Stacks is really good when it comes to playing games and I highly do recommend you give it a try if you're struggling to find the right emulator. Let's move on now and check out our top number one emulator. 
And in first place, we have MEMU. I really do love this emulator and I highly do recommend it. If you are looking for the best emulator, give this one a try first. And obviously, if you don't get on with it, that's fine. Try out Blue Stacks and then try out some of the other emulators. Straight away on the right hand side here, we've got all our normal controls. We can then go to our settings from the right hand side. We can change our performance. We got high and we got custom where we can obviously change it to eight CPU if we want. We can change our graphics. We can set up our frame rate. We can go across to advanced and there's a few more options there. Same with network and we got others there, which is a few more options. We got our shortcuts. There's not a great deal in there, but it's all nicely laid out and also there is enough in there to adjust the emulator to suit your needs. Let's go ahead now and see how well this racing game performs on MEMU. Right, we are now in game and everything's all set up nicely. Straight away you can see our keyboard map settings have saved and it actually shows them on the buttons which I actually quite like as you can see here it says W for the accelerator S for the brake and then we got our buttons for our turning which is really cool let's go ahead and accelerate obviously there would be a way to remove these buttons if you want to hide them unfortunately with the frame rate it is only sitting at 58 frames per second but you've got to bear in mind I have not tweaked any of the settings this is all default and I believe in blue stacks and some of the other ones it was already set for the hardware acceleration on direct X and on this emulator it's automatically set to open GL which obviously there would be a difference in frame rate I hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button below and subscribe for more computer sluggish tutorials